A year ago, LSU was perfect here at home and on the road. A purple and gold magic carpet ride to a national championship. A team of destiny and a team for ages. They are the national champions, the Tigers of LSU. That is music to my ears. I don't know about all of you, but it means welcome to the Home Depot. SEC on CBS and an SEC West battle, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State against the Tigers of LSU, the defending national champions. And here they come. With the 2019 national banner just having been raised by the governor about 20 minutes ago. And there were so many days and nights where I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to say, welcome everybody, I'm Brad Nessler. All the autumns we've spent, I don't know how many games, man, but this is a season, Gary Danielson, that we're about to embark on like no other. Ness, our last game, we were celebrating the 150th year of college football. We were all in doubt if 151 would ever happen, but the commitment of a lot of people from the commissioner's office, presidents of these universities, athletic directors, coaches, coaching staff, support groups, they all pitched in. They did Zoom calls, new protocols, even our network, the networks that cover it, flying in like 70 people to do this game safely. This stuff doesn't just happen. It was a commitment. We are really proud to kick this thing and off. And I know the players are ready. In LSU, we talked about their title run there in the open. They lost 14 guys to the National Football League. They had three more opt out. And last night, we find out their best player is not going to be here either. Five number one draft picks for LSU. Four of them could have returned. Jamar Chase opt out, as you mentioned. But Derek Stingley, just last night, He's going to be out. That means two returning All-Americans that they were counting on. Stingley even practiced for this game. But you know what happens in football? <laughs> the quarterback, it's going to go to Miles Brennan, the new signal caller. Joe Burrow led this team, but it's time to change. And something you don't see very often in college football, a four-star quarterback willing to wait four years to get his first start. Adam and the guys talked about it in the pregame show. The Pirate is back. Mike Leach back in the SEC. He brings his air raid offense. That should be fun for the folks in Starkville. And he's got a quarterback that he kind of brought with him from the Pac-12. He did. And KJ Costello, he saw him at Stanford. They faced each other. KJ has a lot of experience airing it out in the Pac-12. Now he comes to run the air raid offense for Mike Leach. I really believe he'll be fine. I wonder about the other 10 guys as Mike Leach takes a predominantly running team and turns them into three out of four times. They're going to throw the ball. Mike feels pretty good in hand. The jacket still fit. <laughs> Let's do this. You got it. And I hadn't seen Jamie Erdahl in person until this morning. Here she is again. Oh, but Brad Gary, wouldn't you agree how fitting it feels for us to start our SEC season? here on the grounds upon which last year's national championship team was built. Tiger Stadium historically is one of, if not the most electric game environments to witness, but as you mentioned, diminished. 25,000 people allowed, just 10% of that is students. The band is at half capacity and socially distanced. Nearly 2,000 fan cutouts were made, and I mean, they're great, but they don't make a lot of noise. Now, speaking of that noise, spoke with several veteran LSU players telling me, sure, they're gonna have to rely on each other for some of that motivation but one even said a 25% capacity Tiger Stadium may feel as loud as a full house somewhere else. That's a big expectation for a fan base, but it sounds like they're up to the task this season. We'll see how they do, Jamie. Mississippi State won the toss, and they have elected to receive. It's a little sticky, but we've had worse here. 83 is not bad in Baton Rouge for late September. Here we go. Peyton lets it go, and Mississippi State will bring it out to the 25-yard line. And so offensively, the guy that we talked about, you've seen him in a Stanford uniform. Now you see him in the burgundy of Mississippi State. K.J. Costello, it's a long ways from Rancho Santa Margarita, California, to Starkville. And here's the rest of the offense. 
that joins him, including an all-SEC tailback in Kylan Hill. And I think that's the biggest question. How do they use the leading returning rusher in the SEC, Kylan Hill, in his air raid offense? Jacquavius marks his rhythm in the backfield. Costello comes up throwing, and it is a completion on the first play of the game. Pickup of five out to the 35. And he got it to Austin Williams. Defensively for LSU, with Bo Pelini, it would normally be a 4-3. But he's going to go with a nickel defense today. And with Derek Stingley out, as Gary talked about, put some pressure on Jay Ward and Eli Ricks on the corners in a five defensive backfield. Second down and five. Costello pumps once and wanted to go streak down the sideline. Little miscommunication there as Tyrell Shavers, the transfer from Alabama, broke off the route. It'll bring up third down. So when we ask Coach Leach, where are you? I mean, what can you expect? You know, you're turning this thing from a predominantly running offense into the air raid offense where you throw out a three, four times. He says, work in progress. Yes. <laughs> third down at five. Blitz coming from LSU. Costello, and he gets hammered at the 20-yard line. It's Jacoby Stevens with a sack. Number seven, it could have been Grant Delpit, but now it's Jacoby Stevens. They don't look much different than that number seven, do they? No, they don't. Bo Pelini already out of the three plays. He's blitzed twice. He's hit the quarterback once for a sack, and it looks like he's going to dial up pressure. So a three and out, and now... Tucker Day, as you look at Bo Pelini on the sideline, forcing the punts, and Trey Palmer gets back for LSU. And a nice kick, way back at the 20 yard line, fielded over his shoulder. Trying to get back to where he caught it, and he won't. Nice coverage by the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. The beauty of a punt, 58 yards. Here comes Miles Brennan. Long Beach, Mississippi. And he always wanted to be an LSU Tigers starting quarterback. Here's your chance. You waited your turn. You didn't transfer. You waited behind Danny Etling and Joe Burrow. And now it is number 15's time. Chris Curry will have to try to fill the shoes of Clyde Edwards Elair, who's in the NFL now. So let's see what the LSU offense does on first down from the 18-yard line. It is Curry spinning his way to the 20, pickup of a couple. Jaden Crumody made the tackle from the defensive line spot, and he's one of the good ones on that front as you take a look at the front three. The nose tackle just made the stop. Harold Thompson, their leading tackler a year ago. He's the captain of the defense. And there's the back end, the five defensive backs. So second down and eight. We're going to see our first pass from Miles Brunner. Might be a corner blitz coming in his face, too. Here they come. Quick slant, completion, and looks like a first down. Got it to Terrace Marshall. Well, if you lose all those receivers, it's nice to have a Terrace Marshall back. They do, and they're going to move him around in these formations a lot more than what they did last year, where you could pretty much depend on where they would line up. Curry straight up the middle. Nice cut. Ooh, that hit hard at the 34-yard line, but a good pickup. Besides all of the talent, the Heisman Trophy winner, first-round draft picks all over the field. They also lost Joe Brady, their passing coordinator. Steve Enzinger is going to run the show, along with Scott Linehan, who's right. replaced Joe Brady. Scott Linehan was a coach with the Rams, head coach in the NFL. And, of course, Dave Aranda also got a head coaching job at Baylor, so a new defensive coordinator, Bo Pelini, who we already mentioned. This pass a little bit behind. Hey, Rick Gilbert, the highly touted freshman tight end. And it was. And that's that communication that you got to continue to work on. The quarterback thinks the tight end is going to stop right there. The tight end says, I'm going to just take one more step on a short pass like that. You have to be very accurate. No time to adjust. Well, as you led the nation last year on third down efficiency with Joe Burrow at the controls, let's see what they do. With Miles Brennan on third down and three. They've got three receivers bunched to the top of the screen. And Curry 
The tailback in the slot. Six in the box, and they bring five. Brennan has time now running out of it. Wanted to throw on the run, could have tried to tuck it and run. Oh, he took a wicked lick at the 35, and it's a nice hit by Aaron Brule. That was almost cream brulee of the quarterback Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Going to force a punt. And Miles Brennan is going to have to pick out these linebackers and avoid them. Now, it was a run. He's trying to get a first down, trying to get everything out of it he could. But what he got out of it was his first SEC shoulder pad. Hello. <laughs> Zach Van Rosenberg, the second oldest player in college football, is set to punt for LSU. Just turned 30 a couple of days ago. kick long spiral Austin Williams will take it around the 16 yard line so neither team able to get too much going offensively both were forced to punt Bulldogs with their second offensive series when we come back here we're back at Tiger Stadium no score in the first four minutes each team has been forced to punt and Mississippi State has to work at its own 16 yard line. So Mississippi State was 89th in the country last year in passing. They open up the game with three straight passes. <laughs> they still haven't let Kylan Hill touch it. He now, is with KJ Costello in the Bulldog backfield. They got to figure that out. That's a big part of the Mike Leach offense. About 40% of the yards goes to the running backs. He looked out in the flat to him. He gets it to him. And just like that, K.J. Hill shows why he's an all-SEC performer as he hurdles his way out for about six. Those, that's really the running offense in this air raid offense, those short connector flights to the running back. <laughs> <laughs> you don't complete 70% of your passes throwing the ball deep downfield. Little prop jets, right? Yes, yes. those little proppers. <laughs> Second down at three. So all the talk about a four-man line, and what do we start out with here is a three-man defensive line. Costello, delayed blitz coming from LSU. He's running for his life and just has to throw it away. Yeah, it was an odd formation. Three receivers to the left, and Costello rolls right. Well, quarterbacks under Mike Leach over the years. Cliff Kingsbury was a coach of the Cardinals. Graham Harold, Gardner Minshew, who's uh, the mustache star of the Jaguars. Anthony Gordon, who led the country in yards passing the last two years. So. Like, you know, he's always in the top 10, his teams in passing for virtually the last two decades between yes. Texas Tech and Washington State. And last year, third fewest passing yards for the Bulldogs. They're trying to change that, but they find themselves with another third down. Jaquavius Marks in the backfield with Costello. And they'll give it to him. And he's got the first down and a lot more. And Marks out to the 29-yard line. Nice run and a first down. So the whole two weeks of camp, you know this LSU defense has been get to the quarterback, get to the quarterback. You see inside Jacoby Stevens is blitzing and the running back runs right by him. More of a attack the gap defense this year for Bo Pelini. Play the run on the way to the quarterback is the style of this defense. Talk so much with the coaches about Kylan Hill and they said, Jaquavius Marks is right in the thick of it. He was in the thick of it there for a first down, and he's still in there at tailback. Costello, quick slants, complete. Not a big gain, maybe two or three. Javante Payton with a catch. Won't see a lot of huddles in this game. Yeah, you know, it's interesting talking to Coach O before the game. He said, you know, it was a bit really a blow when Jamar Chase and Shelvin, big T, left the team. Imagine when they got the news about Stingley last Boy, night. no kidding. Costello. Looking to whistle one down the middle, but he got it too far in front of his intended receiver, incomplete. And Osiris Mitchell couldn't quite get it. Osiris hand. Mitchell really ran a nice route there on Damon Evans. That was a handful to stop him. He goes out. The senior right here is so patient. Comes out wide. Had him. Easy. Could have been caught. Just let him maybe a yard too much on that play. That's a completion and a big play, and it might have been a first down. Joseph Evans got a big paw in there. I don't think he tipped it, but he, 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 I don't think so, but I think it kind of freaked out K.J. Costello a little bit. And now he's got a third and long. Hasn't had one of these today. Three wide receivers to his right. He's looking that way. Throws as he falls down, and what a catch. And it's complete. 
And it's Mitchell again, and it's a first down all the way down to the 19-yard line. I thought Ali Gay, number 11, was going to get a piece of the ball in the pocket. See how he swims? And Costello does a really nice job of taking the ball away from the rush and then delivering the strike on the play. You watch that one more time. They work on this. They work on it with brooms. Costello takes it away, almost like a behind-the-back dribble, and then makes the throw. That was pretty. Colin Hill back in there with him in the red zone now at the 19-yard line. And it's a draw play to Hill. Spins his way and then backs his way down to the 15. Watch this technique. And then you work on it and you work on it. You feel the rush. Watch number three, KJ. Feel the rush and take the ball out of the way and then move up in the pocket, climb inside and make the play. Wonderful play. And that's what I mean. The veteran quarterback who's got a lot of snaps playing at Stanford in the Pac-12 comes in. He might be more familiar with this offense, even though he's the newest guy on right. the team than anybody else. We know he's a smart guy. He's already graduated political science, wants to be a lawyer. Right now he wants to get a touchdown. Costello across the middle again complete. And that one's Dylan Johnson, a freshman. He's got it down around the 11. Good, really good push inside that time. Costello could feel the push inside. Ica, number 62, is the guy that just took the center and just pushed him right in with the quarterback's feet. There's his numbers at Stanford. In the top 10 in a lot of career categories, and there have been a lot of good quarterbacks out there. Costello must be a smart guy because he knew he only had 10 guys on the field. <laughs> I told you he was a smart guy. Future lawyer right there. <laughs> At the 11, third down and two. It's been a good looking drive. Kylan Hill with Costello in the backfield. KJ has time, pumps once. Whoa, got collared. Oh, yeah, and gonna that's going to be. Uh, Either a face mask or a horse collar or something on Ollie Gay, I think. I think Gay, when he reaches out, Costello ducks right into his hand, and he gets the back of the helmet. Is look what I saw at first. Yes, the back of the helmet. As he reaches out, K.J. Costello ducks down, tries to get underneath it, and then gets There is no foul forward. for a face mask. Fourth down. They called no foul. They picked it up. K.J. Costello backing up. Here comes the field goal unit. They were thinking about the fourth and two. Well, bring out the, Brandon Ruiz. So they did call it a sack, so now it'll be fourth and nine. So not only not a face mask, a sack as well, and it backs up Ruiz out of the hold of Reed Bowman. It'll be a 35-yard field goal attempt. Ruiz with the kick up and perfect. And so the Bulldogs of Mississippi State on the road with a really impressive drive stalled a little bit after the sack kj costello a little disappointed he couldn't get his team in the end zone <laughs> they'll take the three though happy new year oh man how about that zook huh so we have our first big upset of the year the sooners going down <laughs> Ty Davis Price in the backfield. And at first he thought he'd just have to look for Jamar Chase, but it's going to get a little more complicated. Yeah, right? the Bolitnikov winner is not here. But Terrace Marshall is. His big freshman tight end is as well. And here's Brennan going complete. And it's out across the 35 to the aforementioned Terrace Marshall. First down. And that was a very soft zone defense that time. This Mississippi State defense, all new group right there. Zach Arnett from San Diego State was recruited by Mike Leach to run his defense. They're not there yet either. There's been no national champion that has returned fewer players than this LSU football team with just five starters. Play action, Brennan in trouble, and he's going to go down around the line of scrimmage. He waited too long, and Tyrus Wheat brings him down right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard out of it. See, that's, I think, the biggest difference between Joe Burrow and Miles Brennan. Joe Burrow was more of an athlete. Miles is going to have to learn to get rid of the ball in these situations. Remember, the last true game he played with the pressure on was high school. It's way, way faster here. Might be the final snap should be of the quarter. And his throw is complete across midfield of the 48 is John Emery. And that will get LSU into Mississippi State territory. Last season, three quarters, they were scoreless all year. They're scoreless in their first quarter at home in 2020. 
Mississippi State on the road with a three-point lead over the defending national champions here at Tiger Stadium. Second quarter at Tiger Stadium in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the defending champions trailing Mississippi State by field goal. And a third down and four for the LSU offense. Brandon in the shotgun all by himself. Three receivers to the top, two to the left. He's in trouble again, and down he goes back at the 44-yard line. So it's going to be a putting situation for LSU. Tyrus Wheat with a sack. If you see it, he catches it. It's just unblocked that time. That's a give that one to the defensive coordinator. Outside tackle steps for the defensive end. He backs off, and the linebacker makes the play. That's that scheming San Diego State West Coast 3-3-5 look that really confused the offensive line for LSU. Oh, another point. Zach Von Rosenberg's been the busiest player on the field so far for LSU. Williams way back around the five-yard line. Mississippi State has been dominating the football game, but their average starting field position is the 15-yard line. The punt game is keeping LSU with just this three-point game right now. Yep, exactly. This time they got to work from the nine. Costello with Cotton Hill going motion out of the back. Snap. Another bad snap. Yes. And he lofts it out. That's dangerous. Yeah, that's not going to work. Clark, if he had turned around, would have an interception. Yeah, that, that has to be. When you're a quarterback on the shotgun, you're really not staring at the ball. You're staring through the center to the secondary, and the ball kind of enters your vision. You don't have time to catch those like you're a catcher, you know, when you're concentrating on the ball right. in baseball. It's completely different. It has to be consistent right in front of you. If he was a catcher right now, they'd all be breaking pitches. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. The, the uh, knuckleball mitt back yeah. there. That's the guy. There it is. And that one slotted down. That could have been a touchdown if he had kept his hands on it. Ali Gay off the defensive end. Well, Ali Gay has been a force in this game. The transfer, he has been all over the field. He's had close to a couple sacks, his big, long body. And uh, this is the defense that Coach O wants. He wants an attacking four man line. Get in the quarterback space. That's why he brought in Bo Pelini for $2.3 million a year. I was kidding, Bo. You left here at $300,000. You come back at $2 million. <laughs> and it, you're playing bigger games than Akron, and no offense to Youngstown State. <laughs> yes. Third down at 10. From the goal line, Costello fires, and it is intercepted. Picked off. Jabril Cox, touchdown. We've talked a lot about him for the first 20 minutes of this game, and he just made the biggest play of the day so far for the Tigers. Well, remember, he's playing Division Three football. You're going, I think this is him right here. Not exactly sure. How do you miss a guy that big? Number 19, yes. Playing in space, and then he cuts underneath kind of a poor throw. When you make that throw like that, you got a guy right on the hip of the of the receiver, a little bit behind, and it costs you a pick six. But as you said, Brad, a defensive end, outside linebacker, safety, and covering the slot. What a football player. Big time play. KJ Costello did not want to make a mistake down there, and lo and behold, he did. Jabril Cox from 14 yards on the interception made him pay. 7-3, Tigers. Bo Pelini talking with us yesterday, and he said, I really think this guy is going to maybe be a first-round draft choice yes. in the NFL. And he's one of the new faces from unusual places. The grad transfers, Liam Shanahan, coming from Harvard, three-year starter on the offensive line, and then North Dakota State's Bison, who have won a zillion games in a row. Jabril and, Cox and, and comes in here. let me apologize to North Dakota State. I mean, I watch them play all the time. One of my favorite teams to watch. And if they got players like that, you know why they're winning a lot of championships, yeah, right? Yeah, they went on a ton of them. And Mississippi State will start at the 25-yard line. LSU, they don't get their offense going. They might be thinking about 8-5. and five. Here's a low delivery, but it is caught. Completed to Osiris Mitchell. Here's what Gary's talking about. All-Americans that are not here. Jamar Chase, a Belitnikoff winner, opted out. 
Grant Delpit, Thorpe Award winner. Derek Stingley Jr., who was first team All-American, is not playing today because of an illness. Well, think about that football team. Ten of the top 100 players, 10% were from that football Ooh, team. Man. They else. just didn't lose players. They lost NFL players. Yeah, tied a record with 14. Drafted. Here's a throw on the flat. It might even be a lateral. It's a Palin Hill, and he only got a couple of yards, but he only needed a couple of yards. And number one, the true freshman Eli Ricks that time turned that play back in. There are, as Coach O said, we're always going to get players here. Just got to coach them up, get them ready to go, and get them some experience. First down at the 35. Decent working position for KJ Costello finally. Ricks thought he was going to be playing opposite Stingley and getting almost every ball thrown his way. <laughs> right. The Aquarius marks in the backfield with Costello. KJ coming up fire and deep side line. Caught. Beautiful over the shoulder catch by Osiris Mitchell again. Well, you can't really cover a guy much better than Flat did that time. Number 25. He's right there. He just at the last second. When the receiver puts his arms up, needs to turn. Mitchell does a good job of waiting until the last second to put his arms up and, and then makes a perfectly thrown ball into a big game. 34-yard gain to the 31-yard line of LSU. Costello to throw. Going to go deep. Got a man there just off the fingertips again of Mitchell. And he's shaking up a little bit as Jacoby Stevens came over and got a piece of him. And now get an LSU guy down at the goal line. I think Make it's flat. Flat number 25, yes. Stumbled on the play. I think Stevens thought he had a beat on it, but it was just touched by the receiver to kind of knock it off way. Well, at least for one play, they're down one more corner. That's Costello. Had it bad in the air. Complete. That's who? Ali Gay. Yep. I tell you, talking about a being an impact on a football team. Already. He's floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee right now. <laughs> he's tall, he's Gay raging, again. and boy. Boy, 11 and 19 have been something. Mississippi State cannot find a way to get the ball to Cade him. They're not handing him off to him. He can't get in the passing game. He's just not getting enough touches in this offense. He was a guy that finished 1,350 yards on the ground last year. Now the throw down the sidelines of beauty. And it's Tyrell Shavers touchdown. Tyrell Shavers transfer from Alabama. Had one career catch at Alabama. Well, he's got a 31-yard touchdown in this one. Beats him at the line of scrimmage. And Evans has no chance, never got. When you get beat at the line of scrimmage, Darren Evans, who's replacing Flat, who's replacing Stingley. Right. <laughs> Told you they were running out of corners. Exactly. This is a pretty ball and a great over-the-shoulder catch and right into the pylon for Shavers for the touchdown. Extra point is up and good. Bump and run coverage. If you're going to beat it, the best and easiest place to beat it is right at the line of scrimmage. Bad technique. You didn't jam him. You're in trouble the whole way down the sideline, and that's an easy throw for a quarterback. Costello keeps his wits about him. High snaps, batted balls, pick six. He hangs in there. And throws a dart to cap off a 75-yard touchdown march. Good looking drive for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State, capped with a 31 yard touchdown pass, and they lead six rank LSU 10 to 7 here in Baton Rouge. I mean, if you're a Bulldog fan, are you not loving what you're seeing? Absolutely. And what the potential is going to be when Leach really turns his, his players around to the type of guys he wants? Trey Palmer decided to bring it out from off six yards deep in the end zone. He thinks he's not down, but he is. What do you dial up to help your quarterback? Is it a running game or short passes? It's a short pass in a tight window and complete to Jeray Jenkins. 
You know what we really haven't seen is the RPO offense at all. You yeah. know, I mean, it was so devastating at times last year for this LSU offense. There's Zach Arnett, the defensive coordinator yep. for the Bulldogs. And a run for a first down, which is something they've been looking for all day. It seems yeah. like if they have a success three times in this game, LSU success on first down, and they came very hurry up on second down with a running play to pick up a first down. First down at the 26. Ty Davis Price in the backfield with running. How quiet has Gilbert been? They aimed one at him and he dropped it. That's the All American high school freshman tight end. He missed his block there, but Brendan got around it. And has to just throw it away in the sideline. Not trying to pick on the freshman tight end, but he whiffed on that block right there. Basically, as you see, left side of the line of scrimmage right here. He gets steps inside, and once he opens the gate, boom, by him. Pass rush, and Brennan has nowhere to do but dump it out of bounds. Brings up second down and 10. Only seven and a half minutes of ball control, lack of control for the offense for LSU. Kobe Jones, number 52 on that play, really put the pressure on. Brennan throws. This one's complete, and there it is to Gilberts and his first catch and a first down. Well, if you ask me who he reminds me of athletically when you watch him, watching high school highlights of him, he might be a Kyle Pitts, the tight end for Florida. He was big today in Florida's win. Athletic edge player, mismatch all over the field. 17-yard pickup to the 43. Now play action. Brennan going deep. Got a man down the middle. And caught inside the 10-yard line, Jare Jenkins. Finally, a big play for the Tigers. I thought this ball might have hung enough where it could have been defended. Ball hung and hung and hung, and then Jenkins comes up with the catch. To the 10-yard line. And now it's Price. Davis, uh, Davis Price, I should say, inside the five to the four. Well, that's the offense. The throw it down the field, line up quick, and jam it in offense that uh, Tiger fans are used to seeing when it hung. I thought this was going to be potential pickoff. Davis Price again on the carry, got another yard maybe. Marcus Murphy closed in on him, along with Brulee to make the stop. The five and a half minute mark, third down and goal. LSU finally with their offense, with something going on here. Can they capitalize from just inside the three? Play fake, Brennan. Here comes three guys. He has to just get rid of it, and it is. Was it caught? Yes, indeed. Eric Gilbert, the freshman for the touchdown. And he wasn't even throwing it to him either. He was trying to throw it to the end, back end of the end zone. Gilbert backs up and picks it off. Trying to go to the right. Can't get it. Nobody there. Comes under pressure. Gets rid of the ball. Brule puts the pressure, and Gilbert backs up and takes the fifth. Actually, it would be 50 50, 25 25 50. Okay, you're going to pull the extra point. And it's up and good. That was pretty. If you're LSU, though, you have to say, wait, that dip wasn't pretty. We get down to the goal line, we run it twice, can't stuff it in. We try to get it off to the right on a, boot, a, a play action pass, nothing there. You throw it up for grabs, and your athlete makes the play. First it was to Gilbert, then the long ball to Jenkins, and finally to Gilbert again for the LSU touchdown. Touchdown pass to Gilbert. He caught a, another ball for 17 yards in that drive, but some good looking plays there, Gary. Finally getting the offense going a little yes, bit. Yes, Gilbert makes the, the play on the jump ball in the end zone, but it was the two play back to back for that really put the points on the board. Kylan Hill. One of his better runs of the day as he's run out of bounds. Yeah, that's the uh, ninth rush of the game 
but for Kylan Hill, it's only his fifth. There's been some quarterback runs on the play. I think that in this football game, they got to still, as, as this offense gets better and better, figure out ways to get the ball in his hands. 26 passes from KJ Costello so far. We said coming in, or at least we thought, talking all week about it, Gary and I and Jamie, we think, well, maybe 60 balls in the air from Mississippi State, and we're on our way to something like that. Costello, quick slant, got it complete out to the 45 yard line to Austin Williams. Austin Williams with his third catch. Second down, a long two. Hill switches sides to his quarterback's left. A late snap there. LSU got a good jump, and Kyle, uh, Mitchell, rather, on the crossing route can't hold it. He'll bring up third down. Third down, long two. What's the wild card going to do? There he is, number 19. Stella throws complete, and it's a first down. Out to Javante Payton again. I gotta tell you, you gotta be impressed with this Mississippi State offense putting in and retooling a whole new offense. Bringing a transfer in. Actually, during the summer, you'll never believe it. I never heard anything like this. You got, what, 85 guys on the team, and it was K.J. Costello that was running the summer practice because he knew the offense better than anybody else. And now they jump, and it's gonna bring up first and 15, right tackle. Ball start, offense, number 69, five-yard penalty, first down. Quatravius Johnson, the right tackle, came out of his stance with the full start. A little earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question. The last time since 2010, when LSU lost at home at Tiger Stadium. Florida, November 16th of 2016 on a one o'clock Eastern kickoff. Yeah, I remember that. Last play of the game. Another snap that was a little errant, but Costello corrals it and throws across the middle, complete to Kyle hey. Hill. As the clock winds its way towards the three-minute mark. So the goal when Coach Leach was recruiting Kylan Hill to come back, you know, don't, don't leave us, we'll stay with us. He said, I can get you 2,000 all-purpose yards. I can show the NFL that you can be more than a running back. You can do it all. It's going to help your stock. You can be an Alvin Kamara type of guy. Yeah, it's one of those big shoes. Yeah, I know. I'm just trying yeah, to pick I somebody you, out of nowhere. That's style, you mean, right? Right, right. I think Kamara's in that 10 million a year. Yeah, he's, he's making a lot more than Kylan is right now. <laughs> Second down and almost 11. Castello pressure cut. And his arm hit as he threw, and it's incomplete. Jeez, this guy just, Ali Gay is just a highlight film here in the first half. Really is. <laughs> Coming off the edge over here, gets around. Oh, that's a just way too easy. Travis Johnson just gets at the line of scrimmage. He got beat like a bump and run corner. Yeah, he did. Bartavius said, OK, I had a false start when I jumped a little early. Yeah. That time I jumped a little late, and number 11 just blew by me. He said, uh, you know, I knew playing offensive tackle in the SEC would be tough, but this guy's really tough. Yeah. Costello. Throws, lost one complete. On the run is Mitchell. Mitchell down the sideline. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Osiris Mitchell from Costello. Perfect throw, perfect touch. Big arm quarterbacks making perfect throws, but we talked about Johnson doing his job. Watch him on the very next play when he got beat. He does his job. He stuffs it and then he switches off and that gave KJ the time to throw that ball and it's a perfectly thrown ball right over the outstretch arm of Eli Ricks right into the end zone. Brandon Ruiz in to attempt the point after. Boy, this transfer right now, Costello, he saw what Gardner Minshew could do as a, as a transfer and says, you know, maybe I could do that. 75 yards and seven plays, Mississippi State. On the road with a lead over the number six team in the country. Been a long time since LSU trailed at the break. End of the half, they trail here, 17-14. For Jamie's halftime interview with Coach Orgeron, go to Twitter at CBS 
SEC. Back out, let's go to Adam Zucker in our New York studios. That indeed was a dream season, a perfect 15 and 0 to the national championship. And we knew it was going to be tough on them trying to have an encore, Gary. And it's it's been a tough encore so far, that's for sure. There's a lot going right for Mississippi State. It's only 17-14, but what's going best for them, their veteran quarterback right. is used to playing college football. Miles Brennan has not found the pace. The man coverage has given up a couple of big plays, but overall, the parts of LSU you thought was going to make an impact, I thought they'd be able to run the ball better. I thought they'd be able to throw the ball short better than they have. And it does seem when Miles tries to move in the pocket, he seems a bit lost right now. Yeah, and he's got Marquis Spencer who's been in his face, it seems like, all day. So yes. Yes. we'll and see if they can get in some easy throws or something to that effect to get their offense going in the second half. I'm talking with Mike Leach. I said, Coach, you don't ever get in third down that often. He said, well, the idea is to have two good plays on first and second and not get to third down. But they've been living off third down today. Like, at least that guy has. I think Mike Leach goes, you know, I'm running the same plays I ran when I left here, and they're still working. <laughs> Let's check in with Jamie Erdahl. Bear, bear with me. This will be my first translation of Mike Leach off camera. <laughs> so when I asked him how his offense was clicking, the, seeing it live for the first time, he said, it's been solid, but sometimes we're playing with eight instead of 11. I thought he meant Kylan Hill had a running back coming in for him, but <laughs> my translation was he felt like eight guys were on it in terms of communication in any given play. He said those snaps that were misfiring in the first half was just a communication issue. Pretty pleased with the defense in general. So his work in progress, he thinks eight out of his 11 guys are progressing better than the other three. I have a question three. for Jamie. Is it easier to translate Coach O oh or boy. Coach Lee? <laughs> Let's say that they both speak slower off camera. <laughs> <laughs> There's that a good helps. play on the first play of the court. Pass complete to John Trey Kirkland. And that's what the coaching staff does at halftime. They go, okay, we got a quarterback that needs some good things to happen. Can we find him some easy throws? That's probably what they spent the whole halftime doing. Chris Curry straight up the middle and his best run of the day is good for nine. Carol Thompson made the tackle. And they're going in a hurry after the run by Curry. And another one gets them the first down around, well, actually across midfield. Good second effort to the 49 of Mississippi State. And you can see the game plan. If they gain more than five or six yards on first down, they're coming at you right away. Looks like almost a repeat, repeat play, the one they ran before. They just dial it up again. Yeah. Play action this time. Running, moves to his right. Nice move to get away. And then the throw's complete. Same guy across the middle of the 17 to Jenkins. And another first down LSU. And that time, Miles Brennan did a good job maneuvering in the pocket. You don't have to run for first downs. Gilbert at the end kind of shoves, so oh, he's lucky he got away with that one. Comes up throwing again on first down. Plenty of time. Goes to the end zone. Tipped away and complete intended for Gilbert. And broken up by Fred Peters. Peters was the on the safety that almost had a deep post play. And this time balls in the air and he cuts across again and almost had another one. This one was complete, and this one wasn't. A shot, face mask, and a push at the end of it. No call. Mixed it up pretty well. Four runs, four passes. They go 58 yards here in the opening couple of minutes. Not a lot of penalties in this game. Four on each side. Brennan throws it out in the flat. Again, good secondary coverage coming up. You're going to catch those obviously on those screens. It's those yards after catch on those quick screens. Two plays in a row that Bulldog defense took that space. Now watch that space shrink down, miss block off the slot, and they make the tackle for basically a stop. Nice play by Furge. And it forces a third down and long. Third and seven. Reynolds, four out of five on the drive. Pacer, Needs to get to the seven yard line for a first down. Running throws complete and 
might have had the first down if he just would have dropped. He still might get it. I don't think so, though. To Jeray Jenkins, he's been a big part of this drive. I think they're about two feet shy, Gary. They are, and they're going to go fast for it. Corner blitz, defended well, had the right uh, coverage on protection runners. They'll go for it on fourth down. And they get it, and they almost got a touchdown from Davis Price. Keep the legs going. Just keep churning. Keep churning. Ty Davis Price in the backfield. Bradley, he's the guy that's gotten them close, and he's the guy trying to get it closer. Picked up maybe a yard. It'll be second and Harold Thompson closed the hole in a hurry. And again, no huddle, and they hustle to the line. Second down to goal. We'll call it no game, but still almost two yards. Whoa, man, Davis Price dropped at the line of scrimmage again. Well, the stop on the hurry up has helped them. There's defense lined up, they're lined up right. Good blocking, but the scrape off the edge. Boy. Makes the play, Kraft, right? Sean Preston and Kraft. Yes. Way to meet him. Brennan, look out. Down he goes. Great defense by Thompson, the middle linebacker. Well, I don't know if Brule was faking or not, but it worked. It sure did. Because they're going to take a potential hurry-up touchdown and turn it into a field goal with a goal line stand. Three great defensive plays, finished off by a sack. And that'll force a field goal attempt of 26 yards by Cade York. York was sensational last year as a freshman in the undefeated season. This should be an easy one for him to tie the game. And he does at the 9.33 mark of the third quarter. Good looking LSU drive. And Orgeron will say, I'll take the three. But boy, they were so close to what looked like a touchdown march. Back in Baton Rouge, 17-17 tie. At the 25, Mississippi State now to tie game. Costello, delayed draw to Marks. Marks spins for about three. Hasn't been a lot of ground game by either team today. Joseph Evans in on the stop. Hey, lay, lay, lay. One of the things Mike Leach talked about was Xavier Marks, how would played in practice with great intensity. He really likes him, so give him another shot with the football here. Where's number 21? Because Ezekiel Elliott is his guy. Kylan Hill now limping off to the locker room. It's not a good sign. So we're going to see a lot more of Aquarius Marks as we have been in this quarter anyway. And he's still in there with Costello in the Bulldog backfield. Second down and 10. KJ pumps. And now goes deep, far sideline, that one, not quite. Again, Peyton, the intended receiver. Jamie? Yeah, Kylan Hill actually had a tough time warming up to start the second half. He looks pretty aggravated by his right quad. He was on the bike for a while before Brulee got on. Need more than one bike. Need a bicycle built for two over there. Third down at 10. See if LSU can get a stop after giving up that 43-yard pass. And this has been the dangers down for them. Yep, third and long. It's been the gravy for Mississippi State so far. Third and long. Castello over the middle. And again, a perfect throw. And it's Peyton again. And he's all the way to the six-yard line. You know what's happening for LSU a little bit is the stunts up front to get to the quarterback are taking a little bit too long to execute. They're getting the guy freed up by stunting around here, but it's taking a little too long to get to him. Costello steps into the throw, man-to-man -man coverage, win at the line of scrimmage, and another third and long. And now it's first and goal. Costello's now wondering why he ever went to Stanford. Yeah, why didn't I come to Starkville from the get-go? <laughs> exactly. Here's Marks, hammered in the hole as he got a yard and a half, maybe. Todd Harris and Damone Clark. I think, stop. I really think with the success that Gardner Minshew and Jake Goff, Jacob Goff has had running this offense in college, and now they've gone and transitioned into the NFL. A guy like Costello says, this is just finishing school for me. Yeah. I want to do it. And I just passed Dak Prescott as the best to ever throw against an LSU defense. That's not bad company. Second down a goal. At the four. 
Marks in motion out of the backfield. They're going to flip it out to him. Trying to make a man miss and good job to stay home by Clark and make the tackle for a loss. Come on, Clark. One of the guys that uh, Bo Pelini said will emerge as the season goes along. Plays a little defensive end, little linebacker, little linebacker. He's all over the field. And that special number 18 that Caleb out chase on war a year ago. Now third down has been the money down. And with the new rules because of COVID, you can move your bench all the way down to the 15. Mike Leach is standing on the 15 yard line and gets to bring guys and subs into that near hash from the 15. Big advantage. Costello wanted to loft it to the corner. Now he's going to pull it down. He's got a man open and he missed him. I think he could have thrown short and it might have been a touchdown. He went to the end zone. His pump fakes, though, have really got him open. He's really maneuvering that pocket really well. He's getting to throw out of things that, uh, you know, that was probably his third or fourth guy he was going to. Well defended, nobody to go to, but you're right. Right in front of him, he had someone, but had someone also jumping right in his face. That's true. Easy for me to say that uh, Austin Williams was open. Brandon Ruiz hit one earlier from 35. And this will be a 24 yard field goal attempt. Low snap. Got the hold down. Kicks perfect. And so each team in this third quarter has had one possession. Each team has made it pay off after a long drive, having to settle for a field goal. LSU, though, they had it down there. MSU. Uh, Mississippi State did first and goal. They hold them to three. That's pretty good. So both defenses kind of bowed their neck and kept yep. it from, you know, four points each way. Nice answer by Mississippi State. Both inside the five yard line and came away with three points. So LSU will start at the 25. That time Davis Price in the backfield with him to start this drive at the 25. That's who he gets it to. Straight up the middle. And the bigger back of the three. Picks up about seven. Bring up second down and three. National news and notes. Notre Dame Wake Forest was canceled one of five this week. Pack 12 is back. The Max going to be back. We go back to that. Yeah, some teams are playing eight. Some teams are playing six or seven. Mountain West returning. Yeah. Eight game schedule. I think what's really that's going to make uh, the difference at the end of the year. It's going to be all eyeball test this Yeah. Year. Well, here in the SEC, it's a 10 game conference only schedule. This is the first one here in the West between the defending national champion Tigers and the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. First down. Tigers just over the 35. Brennan pumps right, goes across the middle. That's a dangerous throw to Jamar Chase. Uh, Becky Park, Keyshawn Boutte. <laughs> Chase would have caught that one for yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> double clutch, very dangerous double clutch throwing over the middle. Got away with it. You're right. Dangerous throw. Five and a half to go in the third. Second down and ten. See if the Bulldogs bring any pressure on Brennan this time. Defense always gives you this three look and then they shift out of it one way or another. Sometimes he drops down as a safety. Sometimes they roll up the other way. Here comes the pressure. Brennan throws complete. Got it. Racy McMath, and he is racing down into Bulldog territory to the 37-yard line. When you ask the L LSU faithful who will emerge this year, the name they used was Racy McMath. Speedster waited his turn. He was ready to explode. He made the play, used his body there to shield the defender, kind of knocked him out of the way, and then turned upfield. His career game was against Mississippi State got last it, year. But he wants to go deep and does. Man's there, and he's got it. And it's Terrace Marshall for the touchdown. Scoring toss. One of the things that always happens is after the snap, the defense has to show their cards. If you look, the safety came up, they showed their cards, and that's where you throw the ball. 
You can hold those carts tight, but after the snap, you got to show what you got. He got that one a little more to the middle of the field and it paid off. <laughs> Cade York for the extra point. Not that good. So, LSU's had two possessions in the third quarter here in the opening 10 minutes. And they've made both of them pay off for 10 points. First a field goal last time. This time, Miles Brennan hangs in, throws a strike to Terrace Marshall. Touchdown Tigers, and they regain the lead. As LSU's taking the lead back. And Mississippi State, let's see if they have an answer. Alan Hill, by the way, the all-conference tailback is back on the field for the Bulldogs in the backfield with K.J. Costello. On first down. He's going to throw it to him, and he's wide open on the sideline if he can find his footing. Now, big play, and he's still on his feet. Calvin Hill down the sideline is gone. Touchdown. 75 yards for the score. When you talk about a missed tackle changing the scoreboard, this changes the scoreboard. You dump the ball off to your running back right here. I mean, this gets a busted coverage, number one. And number two, your safety misses a touchdown saving tackle that time. It was a nice juke to the inside to get that final outside burst. I know, but when you got the sideline right there, you've you got to use it. You've got to use it. Ninth career game with three touchdowns or more in the air for KJ Castello the first obviously for him as a bulldog I mean you, you make a lot of mistakes on that play you, you don't cover the back out of the backfield and then you can save it you know Todd Harris played a lot of football for LSU that's when you got to save your team well a one play 15 second touchdown drive just like that Bulldogs back in front as we seesaw back and forth in Baton Rouge Saw Kylan Hill go in the locker room here early in the third quarter. I don't know if he was needing a little <laughs> hydration or what, but he hydrated down the sideline for 75 That's yards. That's probably what it was, but Aaron Brule was also on the field for Mississippi State. That magical bike they both were running I know. Right over there. I'm telling you, they need more bikes. That's right. So far, that's they're going to take that thing home with them for sure. <laughs> and so let's see if LSU has an answer from the 36. Surprised they haven't moved Gilbert around more. He's been there almost the whole game in the same spot. Ooh, man, talk about getting met in the backfield. It is the first game. You got to let your freshman kind of get used to college football, but I am surprised he hasn't moved around the offense more. Yeah, he had two big catches on that touchdown drive, a 17-yarder, and then the three-yarder that he just pulled that pop-up that Gary talked about out of the air for the touchdown. He's in the slot now, split out, and kind of you know, the way they used Thaddeus Moss last year. He's a taller and faster version of Thaddeus. No offense to Thaddeus Moss. He was a really good player. This guy's a little bigger target and has more speed. Brennan in trouble on second and nine. Runs out of it and gets what he can. That's what I'd like to see him do, though. If he's going to get pressure, I want him to go north, south, get me four, five, six yards, and get on the ground. You know, you're not going to outrun people. You're not going to outfake them and everything like that. Just save the play. Rodney Gross came in, by the way, for a relay from that position. Third down at five. Now well, Brennan is saying, let me go, will you? Let's go. Center judge will backpedal, and here we do go from the 41-yard line. Empty set, so Miles Brennan getting ready. Try to pick this up. Nobody deep, everybody in the picture. No one, no safety back. Man across the board. Here comes extra pressure, quick slants complete. It's good enough for a first down. Terrace Marshall again. Tyrus Sweet was at the line of scrimmage and he dropped and he almost dropped right into that slant pass. Number two. First down at the 41 here in the final minute of the quarter. There's the play action. They might want it right here. Brennan oh, oh, he throws it right to the defensive back. It's Furge, the linebacker, actually. And now he dropped it at the end. Wait a minute. 
Did LSU get it back or was he down? Was he down? I th they're marking him down. Boy, that, that, you talk about either miscommunication or the ball slipped out of my hand, but there's not much in between those two things. First down, Mississippi State. Isaiah Spurge is the guy that comes up with the interception, and then here's the end of the play. Yeah, he's down. He's down. The ground caused it, but he was so alone, it was as if he was 10 yards in the open when he caught the ball. He's standing right out here. Wow. Receiver is open. I, you don't know if McMath broke his road out or was the ball hit out of the quarterback's hands? Yep. Yep, his he got elbow. hit in the elbow. What? He tried to follow through, but that was just a wounded yeah, duck. Because, boy, that saved a touchdown. That whoever got his arm on him saved a touchdown. And Costello comes up firing again, and he goes, I like this guy, zero, Javante Payton. It's the first year, by the way. Zero is an official number in college football, and we don't mind any numbers they add because most teams have yes. three of everything. True. And he's got the dog collar on for the interception. And now let's see if they can turn it into points. Big game so far for Peyton. Six catches, 132 yards. Kylan Hill now in the backfield with Costello with a first down at the LSU 44 here in the final seconds of the third quarter. Four man rush, Costello quick throw, incomplete, broken up by the freshman Eli Ricks. So Davis comes from the right side of the quarterback, just reaches in as he's being yanked down and just tips the elbow. Talk about great effort. Yes, Jordan Davis actually made the play. The turnover chain goes around the interception, but the guy who made the play was Jordan Davis. Second down and 10 at the LSU 44. Here's a shovel pass. Kyle Hill. Hill in the open field. First down and more inside the 30. And the quarter comes to a close at the 26-yard line for Kylan Hill, who's had a big second half. You just get the feel that Mike Leach has been calling these plays almost like watching a, a reverse wishbone offense. They've run the same plays so many times. You know, Army and Navy, they know what to call against everything. They know in the back of their mind, and Leach just dials it up. Number six, LSU's in trouble at home. End of three, 27-24. We'll return to Baton Rouge right after this message. And a word from your local station. We start the fourth and final quarter with Mississippi State in front and with the football and a first down at the LSU 26 yard line. And the pressure has definitely shifted to Bo Pelini's defense now. They got to hold this offense to a field goal. Kylan Hill in the backfield with Costello who comes up throwing completes it again and again he's got it to Austin Williams and he's got it first and goal. Do love the way that Mike Leach explains his offense. We try to run to open grass. They try to close open grass. Right. We throw the ball to open grass. We do it over and over and over again. Now from the nine, first and goal. Costello looks left, lobs it to the corner, a touchdown. 500 yards passing and Austin Williams for the score. I mean, it's so nice to be able to do the ball. You know what you want to do. It's basic passing. There's nothing fancy about this. Inside guy just runs to the back of the end zone. The outside guy runs a slant. Everybody's got this play right there. He's just going to go out this way and cross. Perfect throw. Man to man coverage again. And he gets beat like Coach O told Jamie at halftime. Not happy with our man to man coverage. 502 yards passing and four touchdowns. KJ Costello. Just hope he doesn't opt out after this. <laughs> Extra yeah, point. I've done enough. <laughs> I've done all I can in week one. It's a, it's a, it's a different world, Ness. It's a different world. Absolutely. Can't do it any better than that one. He's had some pretty ones all day long. And the lead for Mississippi State goes to 10. 
34-24, still a long ways to go. And LSU will start at the 25. Now Miles Brennan trying to get LSU back in front. And here's Chris Curry. And Curry spins his way for a first down run. Again, as you said, still plenty of time. Don't have to abandon the run. It's been good for Miles Brennan. Think about Miles Brennan here. He's had three drives, a field goal, a touchdown, and then he gets his arm hit, which would have been another touchdown. At the 45 of the Bulldogs, a chance here for LSU now to get something going. Davis Price for about four. Emmanuel Forbes in on the tackle. We wind our way down near the 11 minute mark. Boy, they get a touchdown off the interception. Things are really going to get interesting. They already are, for that matter, considering you're riding a 16 game on a 16 straight streak. And that one's good for Racy McMahon for a first down. And they'll try to hurry up to the line at the 33. Good enough to catch, but not good enough to get any yards yeah. after it, right? and the ball's perfectly placed for the six points. Just as he turned, he lost that phase. <laughs> York's extra point is good. Well, they did turn the interception into a touchdown, and it didn't take them long to do it. Miles Brennan, Harris Marshall, his favorite receiver, and he dropped it in there like he was picking strawberries in a bucket. Touchdown, LSU, and it's down to three. This has been some kind of game. Miles Brennan, who struggled early, has now come out to throw three touchdown passes. KJ Costello's thrown four, and it's 34-31, and the lead just keeps changing hands with 11 minutes to go. Avery Atkins to kick. And Mississippi State from the 25. Terrence Thanks, Marshall, Jimmy. who had 13 scoring grabs last year, two here today. Costello lost the ball. And Jacoby Stevens has it. His second fumble recovery of the day. Well, Allie Kay started it coming around the corner. Same move that Costello has used before when he takes the ball away. Watch, coming around the corner, first it's gay. Then he has to move up in the pocket. And then when he does it again, it's knocked loose on the second play. Jacoby Stevens wearing that famous number seven. He said, I grew up watching Patrick Peterson make all kinds of plays. He's made two huge ones here today. And 7-11. Worked well. Yeah. <laughs> Casino was open today down by the river, you know. 7 Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> They've been running the ball effectively to start these drives. Will they run it again? Emery's in there with Brennan. Switches sides to Brennan's right. Wheels his way for about three yards to the 20. Last 
last defending champion to lose a season opener, Michigan, at Notre Dame a long time ago. Right now, LSU's trying to regain the lead, defending their national championship. Look out behind, Miles Brennan. Throws on the ends. Just tossed that one away. Was getting pressure again. That Kobe Jones was chasing that time. You can feel it from behind. Brad was yelling it. I don't know if he heard you, <laughs> but you could see it coming the whole way. He's known all day. He's got one look, step up and throw the ball. Because that bulldog pass rush has been effective. Big third down here. They need to get to the 13 yard line. And remember, in his head, he knows that a field goal ties this game. He's set for Brennan to throw. He's in trouble, got away from one but not the other. And he actually gained about a yard. Marquis Spencer's had a good game, man. Yeah, I think in his head there, if he didn't have anything wide open, he wasn't going to throw the ball. He can't give up three points. Cade York, who last year as a freshman hit from 20, 23, and 25, is going to be asked to hit from 40 here to try to tie the game. He had ice in his veins last year as a freshman. Let's see if he can connect in a big time way here at the 942 mark. And he does. 40 yarder is good. He ties the game, but you got to give Mississippi Mark's State credit. After the turnover, a three and out. 34, 34, 937 left. So we actually had him listed at 502 yards passing on that last touchdown, so they adjusted something to take uh, four yards away. But nonetheless, it's been something watching him play today. <laughs> well, it was a 10-point deficit a couple of minutes ago, and now it's a tie game at 34. And this is where vet, being a veteran, being in the hunt in a lot of football games, you got to come through for your football team right now. A couple bad plays. You've got to show the leadership. Castello going to throw up the flat to Kylan Hill. He's got a big gainer again. Gives him a little lazy leg and gets about 15. Jay Ward knocked him out of bounds. Didn't let him get down that sideline this time. So Kylan Hill is approaching 150 yards and receiving in this football game. Got it out to the 43 yard line. First down at the 43. Castello. Pressure coming and he lost the ball. Was his arm going forward or is that a fumble? I think he fumbled that. They're saying fumble. Yes. Andre Anthony might have gotten a piece of his hand. I don't know. This almost looked like he dropped it. Here's another. Complete pass. It'll be second and ten at the 43 yard line. Please reset the game clock to 9 0 1. So that is huge. They are maintained possession. And it's just a second and ten and not a disaster. Second down. Yep. 10. 43 yard line. One more look, and Gene, there it is. Aimlessly falls. Incomplete. So that could have been a killer for Mississippi State's offense. As it is, still tied, nine to go. They still have the ball. Can you imagine the crowd here in Death Valley? What they be doing right now? Can you imagine how loud it is? This is, you know, college football in these cathedrals in the South, especially, is a way of life to boo this type of a call and make it tough on the visiting team. There's less than 22,000 here, and I'm not sure there's that many here now. Costello on a crossing route has got it complete. And here's his main man again, Shavers, who had a big touchdown earlier, and he goes all the way down to the 21-yard line. Maurice Hampton had a shot at him as the crossing route comes away. No pick or anything. He just crosses. Hampton comes up, misses the tackle for extra yardage. He can't run 
Ness. You seen anything simpler than that? No. Off, no, right? That's just pitch and catch and then run after the catch. Yeah, I mean, they didn't pick. They didn't really. They just crossed. You know, one time if you play man defense, usually you're not very good at zone, and that time they just messed it up. Now they go with that draw again. Colin Hill, somebody trying to strip it out of his left arm, and he tucked it in and got to the 14-yard line. So that 37-yard pass play to Shavers has set him up down in the red zone. So about 25 extra yards after that missed tackle by Hampton on the play. 13 touches today, and boy, has he made those touches big, especially as a receiver. He's right on target for the 2,000 yards he was promised. <laughs> Second down and four, under eight minutes from the 14-yard line. Blitz coming on Costello, and it pays off. He has to dump it. And it's Jabril Cox. He might get intentional grounding on this play. Had one already today, and one that they picked up. Yeah, I think he's going to. I don't blame him. I mean, come right off the corner, he needed to get rid of it quicker. I don't know if he knew the protection was weak. Intentional grounding, offense, number three. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Loss of down, this is third down. Coach Leach would say we're kind of a work in progress. You know, you're not used to all these looks. When you've been in the offense three or four years, you get used to where you're at risk. And this time from his backside, there's nothing he could have done. There's nobody even close no, to that good football. Call. So lost it down, back to the 25, third down at 15. This is when Bo Pelini's defense needs a big stop. It's a three-man rush. Costello. Throws incomplete too high. Intended for Jonte Payton. Yeah, and it's so well defended. Good, good defense that time for LSU. They bring just three, force the throw early, and even if this is caught, it's going to be well short of the first down. That's how you play defense. Know where the sticks are, force them to the outside, and even with a completion, you're going to make the tackle and force the field goal. Now the grad transfer, Brandon Ruiz. I don't know how many times he's been in a tight spot where he needed a big kick. This is his chance on the road in the SEC. Welcome to the Southeastern Conference. Brandon Ruiz from 43. Kick on the way. He says, I am up to the task, my friend. Perfect. Big kick for Ruiz. So both defenses again have held. Okay, LSU gave up some yards in the middle of the field, but held for the field goal. And after the turnover before, that Mississippi State defense pitched a three and out. Whew. What a game. 727 remaining in regulation. We'll put it that way. That was a 50 yard drive and seven plays. The majority of it was to Shavers on that 37 yard crossing route with the run and catch after. And that set up Ruiz for the field goal. There's the quarterbacks. <laughs> seven touchdown passes so far between the two. And just 553 yards through the air. And that is about 100 and roughly 70 more than KJ Costello's previous career high. Another lead change, number nine. So my head is in Miles Brennan's head right now. Okay, you look it up there. Seven minutes to go, fourth corner. So here we are, 75 yards away right now from Miles Brennan. It's his time, and it's his throw. Complete. Eric Gilbert. Eric Gilbert, the freshman tight end who has a touchdown catch today. Trying to get everybody in the right spots. On a second down and five. Chris Curry. Got two, maybe three. Got a LSU lineman slow to get up. I'll tell you, there is no respect at all for Miles Brennan keeping that ball on that right hand. Now, remember, you called in the Alabama game, Joe's keeping the ball as his Heisman moment. It's there. I don't know if Miles is going to keep it or not. Four out of six on third and three or less. This is the biggest three of the day with six and a half to play. No safety deep again. Brennan, here they come after it. He got away from one and two and incomplete. 
And it's fourth down. Harris Marshall, the intended receiver. Jordan Davis, number six, was the first one, made him get out of his first throw, reload, and he couldn't get the completion. Good defense. They were all up. They knew it. They turned their cards over before the snap that time. <laughs> all 11 guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage. The play at the end of the play by Fred Peters, too, to not let the receiver get his hands on it. Austin Williams waiting on. Man. And he's going to call a fair catch and take it around the 28 yard line. They're going to flip it out to Kylan Hill, kind of like a handoff on the flat. He gets hammered at the 34 yard line. Jabril Cox knocked him unceremoniously out of bounds. And Tyler Hill said, why are you doing me that way, man? <laughs> I was trying to step out of bounds and you leveled me. Got five, though. Second and five. Time to start using this clock. Use the whole play clock or not? I don't think they care. Costello pump fakes one way, deep middle, and what a throw and catch Williams. First down. I got to give Williams a lot of credit. He was wrapped up on the play. He stayed with it. Williams has been big on those short. He's kind of been the Wes Welker uh -huh. on this play right here. He's had those short passing games all game. Goes out, stalls, and then a perfect throw right in the body. When that tight coverage like that, you can do it. That's the execution that Leach loves in the offense. Do it over and over again. I don't care if we're covered. We can still complete it. Under five and a half to go. Playing with a three-point lead. Costello, a little bit of a play fake, threw it into no man's land. I guess Austin Williams might have been the intended receiver. I think that was going to be a wide receiver screen That's that what I time. Thought too. I think he was going to be the blocker. At any rate, stops the clock at 517. Remember, LSU used a timeout earlier. It's always nice to run your first play. Just put the one up. We're going to run play number one in this situation. Did you see Mike Singler? <laughs> that little three by five card. Number one. Good. Play number one. Let's see what play number one is. Usually they, they love to cross those receivers in front of the quarterback so that if it's man, they rub. If it's zone, they stop. Well, they do use the play clock all the way down. Costello over the middle, and there he goes again. And we saw this last time for 37 yards, and this time it goes all the way to the 26-yard line. I love to cross those receivers, those shallow routes. It's almost like beating the, the, the going deep with bump and run coverage. They just go wide on bump and run coverage. Wide to the middle of the field to the other side. Just run away from the coverage. If it's man, you know you got him. Osiris Mitchell with 27 more yards on the reception to the 25. And now KJ Costello is one completion away from 600 yards passing. He said for them to win, he's going to have to get close to 600. That's as close as you can get. Now they finally hand it off. And it's only a yard or two for Kylan Hill. But that works the clock, too. He'll be down under four to go on the next snap. they don't use the play clock to their advantage. KJ Costello comes up by his center and he says, yeah, I'm going to back out here in a second. Just take your time. They will be under four. And probably down around five on the snap. Actually less than that. Finally, Costello delayed blitz. Throws, tips, incomplete. Intended. Jay Ward broke it up. Yeah, Jay Ward anticipated that one. He almost beat the ball to the spot that time. He's out of with these crossing routes. I'm going to cross two. Watch him anticipate the throw. He comes off of one round. He almost got there before the ball got there, didn't he? That was good timing. It was yes. a bang bang play right there. Perfect. Now the biggest third down of the ball game is at hand, especially for the LSU defense. Third and nine. Gonna go long to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Mitchell. Another huge third down play. Touchdown.
touchdown number five for KJ Costello. Three touchdowns against LSU's defense on third and long. This time he beats Jay Ward. Remember, it was Jay Ward who was sniffing on that crossing route before. This time he goes right by him. Stutter and go. Oh boy, really bad technique that time. Barely got his hands on him. Was out of phase before he even moved. A pair of fives, but it's the Maroon five that wins it. <laughs> yeah, that's good music for yes. Mississippi State fans. An extra point is good. A 10-point lead again for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State, and what a day for that young man. 623 passing yards and another touchdown here. He stalls. He doesn't really impede the receiver. He thinks he's going short. He guesses a short route. And after K.J. Costello throws for over 600 yards, he goes, you know, I might have to try to have to find where Starkville was on the map, <laughs> but I'm glad I found it. Just to let you know, I mean, you know, uniforms are, are big, you know, but the players in the uniforms mean something too. Yeah. That probably would have been Derek Stingley Jr. over there on that play. Uh, no doubt. And Osiris Mitchell, 183 yards on seven catches, including two touchdowns. And the last one might be the killer. But still 3.39 to go. And LSU will start 75 yards away. They need two scores. And down he goes. Not what they needed. And guess who it is? Brule. That bicycle is the most valuable bicycle in this building. Brule got a little bit of a cramp, came back from it. A little bit of stunt to the outside. Tackle goes out and comes around inside for the sack. Clock running and a big loss. Ten, second and twenty. Flushed again, going down again. Way back at the six-yard line, and it's Jaden Crumity, the nose tackle. Three-man rush, really good protection, dropping eight. And Miles Brennan right there just does not have confidence to let that ball go in the small seams. He dances around and really causes his own sack on that play. Now they're back inside the 10-yard line, and there's not a lot of third and 26s in the playbook. Come on, seven sacks in a football game. That's the look, yes, yeah, seven sacks. Backed up to the nine. Brennan and now from near his own goal line. He'll throw it short over the middle and hope that Emory can do something with it, but he can only get it to the 20. you got to go for it on fourth down. After the play, personal foul. Defense, number 13. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, that is huge, and it keeps any kind of hope alive. Forbes, the freshman, is the guy that's called for the penalty. Yeah, it's uh, fourth in the ball game. Now it's alive. Keep your wits about you. Game's not over till it's over. I do not know what he did. He's still shaking his head, too. But whatever he did has given LSU a first down at the two minute mark. Brennan throws low, but he made the catch to Terrace Marshall. Right side of your screen. Let's see if we can see what happens. Comes into the play. Whistles blow. Yes. But he nudges him, but why? Why do you have to do it? No need to do it. Keeps the game alive. And to a minute and a half. Time is valuable. Brennan throws complete again. This one's Marshall again. And he's into Mississippi State territory. Cameron Wire comes in now to play left tackle. Again, last loss for LSU, seven overtimes. Mississippi State has been dropping into a zone and giving the underneath throw. Brennan fires complete. It's McMath to the 30. Gracie McMath, they hustle up to the line. Yep. Every second counts right now. And the first down stopped the clock. Now let's see how quickly they get it snapped. 
as it's back in play. Only taking a couple of seconds. Brennan loads, reloads. Rolls to throw across the middle. Tough catch made by Emory. He's trying to get to the sideline. It won't get there. Got it to the 22 yard line. Clock continues to run, and now it stops. Yeah, I kind of think that's a good timeout because it's going to be 10 to 12 seconds before they can run another play. You got to just assume you're going to throw first down throws from now on or touchdowns. Miles Brennan back to his cadence. Throw out in the flat to Marshall. Broke one tackle, didn't get the next one down to the 15. Gonna have to hustle. First down, stops momentarily. So they needed the one, they got that, they got about six. And now they're at the 16 yard line and the clock begins to run. That'll rip it to the end zone here, don't you, Gears? Yeah, I don't think anything short of the end zone's gonna Matt, do it. Well, Marshall he dropped it, or it would have been a touchdown, maybe. It would have been a catch at the four. They can get a first down though now. So they got between the five and the goal line, yeah. it still would be. Yep, he would have had it and at least gotten to the four, which would have been good enough for a first down. You know, the other way you can play this is just kick the field goal and go to onside kick and go Big Ben. That's true. Potential targeting on the throw. Brennan now will go to the end zone. Jump ball out of bounds, incomplete. Actually, McNath caught it, but he was out of bounds. So obviously now you got to go field goal here, right? Fred Peters was a guy in coverage. He's a guy that almost got called for the targeting a couple of plays ago. Here's the look at McMath just running out. Ooh, it's closer than I thought. I think it's still getting up. Well, I'd take the three. I'd take the chance at the three and then try to throw it. They might run out of time on this play if he waits too long to unload. Clock is going to expire on the jump ball and it's intercepted in the end zone anyway. And Mississippi State has pulled off an upset on the road and picked off the defending national champion and sixth ranked LSU Tigers. And KJ Costello, his debut in the SEC, nothing short of brilliant. 623 yards and five touchdowns. And in a game that seesawed back and forth nine times, the Pirate and the Air Raid offense of Mississippi State has come to the SEC. Just a brilliant performance. Getting his football team ready, sticking with basics, and using the veteran quarterback. Remember we talked about yep. it. You got the veteran guy on the field. LSU had the new guy. The veteran showed his value in this football game. <laughs> and Mike Leach is with Jamie Ordo. Coach, I know you preach intuition through repetition. How comfortable did KJ Costello look in your offense today? Uh, I thought we got better as time went on. I thought, you know, we definitely had some rocky parts and, you know, some of it has to do with the fact that, um, you know, they're getting good pressure. I mean, they have big, strong, brutal guys. And so they uh, pressured us most of the day. But uh, I thought he did a good job sticking in there. And the, uh, the best thing he did after we hit adversity, he responded to it. He does a great job being the same guy every play and can play the next play. Uh, maybe as good as anybody I've dealt with. So, yeah, I thought he really had a good debut. And I know that uh, we have a turnover too, but you know, that wasn't, that, that wasn't just him. And then, uh, and, uh, you know, heck, if uh, we all start something like he did, we'd be very happy, I think. Well, what a welcome back to the SEC for you, Coach. It's a great day for you, huh? That's a, yeah, it's better than average, I'll tell you that. <laughs> the, the, this stadium, there's a lot, there's a lot of ghosts in this stadium. and. Um, you know, and you play, uh, we play, we played LSU because, you know, New England, Green Bay, and the Chiefs uh, <laughs> had somebody scheduled, so we played these guys, but I'm really proud of our guys. I thought we played real well. I thought we stuck in there during tough times and uh, won the game. Well, they want to celebrate with you. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. you know, Death Valley, where dreams come to die, but the dream was alive for K.J. Costello today. I love to see what guys do after adversity. That's what the teammates look at. After the two turnovers, he produced a field goal and a touchdown to take the game. What a day. We might not see a performance like that again for a long time out of the quarterback.
KJ Costello and his team pulls off the upset over number six LSU here in Baton Rouge. For Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl, I'm Brad Nessler. It has been great to have you back with us in the SEC on CBS from Baton Rouge. Final score, 44-34. College football postgame show presented by Rocket Mortgage. It's coming up right after these messages. So long for Baton Rouge.